What's going on, guys? This is Vinny here, Eight Figure Vision. So I want to hop on here quickly and just share a bit, uh, just a little bit of perspective uh, as far as what's going on with uh, a lot of volatility, a lot of action has been happening in the markets recently. So uh, we're going to take a look, right? Everything from GameStop to to AMC to uh, the silver, uh, the, sort of the, the silver ETFs that we're seeing being traded right now. You know, this, uh, this, this whole idea of social media becoming a platform for the retail investor to, as you sort of see this battle of the retail investor, you know, be a retail meaning just the average everyday person with, you know, a hundred bucks in Robin hood or, you know, or, or the, you know, the versus the big Wall Street hedge funds, right, who who have so much control over the markets. So uh, you see this big battle and this there's this whole uh, sort of narrative around being the, you know, around sort of David versus Goliath right now. That's sort of what it feels like. Right. And. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always a question of like, who's going to win, right? And what's going to, you know, where's David going to go? What Goliath is David going to attack next? And, you know, you got to, so I want to put a little bit of perspective into it because there's so much activity and so much talking about it that uh, it's very, very important that we're clear on, you know, maybe I can give you a little bit of perspective that you might not necessarily have heard yet. And, uh, we're going to start with sort of what happened today with silver. When you look at silver, uh, you see that the price of silver has spiked up. Actually, you know what? And I'm going to show you guys on my screen. That way uh, you can follow along with me. All right. So you guys should be able to see silver. This is a chart of silver prices of over all time. It goes back to 1974. Now, as you can see, we haven't even necessarily reached an all time high. However, you can see that just recently, over the last month, well, basically over you know, just this past year, just with this little activity on this Reddit feed from, you know, Wall Street Bets, you see that we reached a new high that we haven't hit since back in, as you can see there, August, since July, August time frame of 2020. So it's been a, a matter of about six months since we've seen, you know, this sort of volatility. Now, of course, back in July, uh, well, actually, this this goes back up to, to the pandemic. This goes back up to, uh, you know, sort of the, the lockdown. In those days, you could see that there was a big uh, spike in the price of silver. Why? Simply because usually what you notice in the markets is, you know, a lot of investors tend to acquire more silver and hoard more silver and gold, precious metals, right? When you know they're in times of social unrest, and usually in those times, you saw, you know, back in as you can see. So this was June two thousand eleven, okay, and then the next time that we saw a big rise was right here. You guys have to actually have to zoom in to see it even closer. But as you can see, back in August, July, March, right there in March, and basically we had reached an all time low back in March 2020. And everybody knows what happened back then. At that point, silver had surged in growth month after month. And we're talking April, May, June, July. This is 
people purchasing as much silver, physical silver, silver futures, right? Acquiring, you know, different, you know, even future options, uh, silver options as well until it reached about $27, right? In August. Since then, uh, you see, you know, sort of the market stabilizing again until we got to where, and, and it never returned to that $27 all last year until today. And today you see, and we can go back to that. Today we could see, The silver, I mean, it's all over the news right now. <laughs> silver just reached basically almost hit its eight year peak, you know, as investors book profits. So silver you know, was down about 28 cents an ounce, uh, you know, after it hit $30 on Monday, you know, according to this article uh, and essentially you know, we haven't seen that as I just showed you guys in, in the chart over here in quite some time. So what's interesting enough is that this was a cause of, you know, a lot of what's been going on, on social media, like I had been describing. What makes this most interesting is why are people buying silver? And you know, a lot of people are buying silver right now. And I will actually argue that the majority of people who are buying silver are buying silver to make a quick buck. And the reason is because the over 5 million users on the Wall Street bets right now who are active in the group have also followed along the herd and buying things like the idea of GameStop. Right. GameStop is sort of what started on. If you looked at this, many wise inv sage investors uh, have said in the past that when you make an investment, you don't want to catch a falling knife. Right. And what that technically means is you don't want to make an investment that uh, basically you're you're purchasing something, hoping that it's going to grow in value uh, and that with the risk of losing a lot of it. And then it, and then you actually do lose all of it, uh, but the loss is way more damaging than the high risk of the game. And essentially, that's exactly. Actually, I'll leave it up to interpretation for you. When you look at this chart, this is a chart of price for GameStop. <laughs> now, I mean, I don't know if you ever seen a fallen knife. But that pretty much looks like a fallen knife. Let's take a look. Yeah, <laughs> almost looks identical. So don't really want to catch something that looks like a fallen knife. So in essence, uh, if you really look at here, here's the issue that I have with GameStop. And before I sort of describe and what's going on with uh, GameStop and AMC and Silver. I want to preface by saying that essentially I, I don't like to invest in things just out of pure speculation, uh, out of gambling. I'm a terrible, terrible gambler. <laughs> I have the worst luck uh, when it comes to you know, just guessing something and hoping that it's going to go up. That's not my, that's not my game. That's not my style. That's not how I invest. So essentially I just want to preface by saying that you, if, if I've learned anything from the university, right. And our platform that we have at iGenius uh, that uh, we learn from investors who have decades of experience trading in every single financial market, out there and they all agree on one thing and they agree that you don't want to catch a fallen knife <laughs> you don't necessarily you you want to be smart about your investments in the form of being good at the fundamentals as well as on the technicals and what do i mean by that well fundamentals uh, in lamest terms fundamentals are basically describing an investment 
from a standpoint of what's really going on with that asset. So let's say you wanted to buy GameStop. All right, let's say you were an investor. Let's say you were a Shark Tank investor in GameStop, right? You and and the the owners of GameStop had approached you said, "Hey, you know, we'd love to sell you our company. Right? We believe our company is going to grow in value significantly." And you know, they they pitch you their business, right? Hopefully that you can put in some of your own investment. That is what you're doing when you're buying a stock, any stock. So as an investor, you have to think, right? Like Warren Buffett does. Warren Buffett is very clear in saying, hey, I do not buy stocks. I buy, and I actually will get it straight from the horse's mouth. Warren Buffett says, hey, I don't buy stocks, right? I buy businesses. So because he buys businesses, then I can't find a quote right now. Guys, oh, maybe I'll find it in here. <laughs> but essentially, and he's one of the richest people of all time. So one of the main things to remember is essentially, look, yeah, he came up with a lot of great quotes, right? So as I scroll through the quotes here, let's talk a little bit about what he said uh, very clearly. And he says that you want to make sure that, or at least the way that he invests in businesses is he invests with the intention to look at them as a business, right? And what does a business have? A business has products and services, right? They have goods and services that are exchanged with customers, consumers, distributors, suppliers, uh, and so on, contractors, right? There's, there's, there's an economy, a sort of microeconomy that's being fueled within that company, right? So at the end of the day, when you buy a stock, you're buying that stock hoping that the company, basically you're funding that company to provide more goods and services. However, what happens if where you're putting your money is simply a vacuum. What if that person came to you with a suit and tie and said, hey, I have a great business idea for you and it's called GameStop and it's gonna make a lot of money and all you need to do is just give me some money and you're gonna make a lot more money. And you'd say, wow, well, that sounds great, right? <laughs> However, uh, you later on find out that there actually is no business. You actually find out that he simply used your money to make more money because he pulled a bunch of money from other people and it increased the value of its stock. And then everybody else sold. And because you weren't the first one to find out, then by the time you found out, you ended up being one of these guys over here. Well, that's what's going on. So now don't get me wrong. Right. Don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, yo, there are there are a lot of people right now who actually the, there's recently been a report about a few people who have became billionaires, you know, essentially through buying GameStop stock. However, um, if I were that person who became a billionaire, that's just not the one, the legacy that I want to lead. For me, my my own personal opinion, right? When I have I look back at it in the future and I talk to my kids about how I made all these riches, and they find out, hey, uh, yeah, the only reason I made these riches is simply because I took a chance and a bet. I made a big bet on something and I got lucky. I would rather tell my kids that it required hard work. It took discipline. It took strategy and vision over the long term, which secured me a lot sooner instead of me sweating and guessing and being lucky. I mean, to me, that sounds like a gamble. So I would rather make billions on a, on a sound strategy for sure than make billions on a gamble. Because if you can make 
billions on a gamble? How many people are talking about the possibility of you losing billions on a gamble? And that is the difference. So let's look a little bit. What we're looking at here, guys, is the technicals, right? Is the price of GameStop. As you can see, GameStop, historically, you know, if we ignore just sort of the commotion that was going on recently, GameStop had exceeded. GameStop had always maintained a price level right at above $60. But let's remember what kind of company is GameStop. You see, GameStop, GameStop is a company that basically, what do they do? Well, let's go on to their website. Let's see what, what they provide. Oh, GameStop is the world's largest retail gaming destination. Okay, awesome. Right, so let me ask you this. Comment below if you've been to a physical GameStop in the last year. I would love to see your comments. How many of you have actually been to a physical real GameStop in the last year? You see, so, and I, I, I will almost can guarantee that most of us, you know, there'll be very, very minimal responses about how many people actually have been to a GameStop <laughs> in the last year. All right, so when we look at, when we look at it, this is an online retailer. Where do you find these GameStops? Well, these GameStops are physical retail locations in malls, usually in malls, right? Big box companies. But wait a minute, physical retail locations in malls? What other locations exist in malls? Oh, Toys R Us. Let's take a look at Toys R Us. Oh, wait a minute, Toys R Us. Toys R Us, just in the last day, closes its last two stores. <laughs> its last two stores just when it thought it was coming up. And it basically lost its last two stores. And Toys R Us was, look, I mean, five reasons Toys R Us failed to survive bankruptcy. Now, obviously, why I, I'm very careful about where I get my news, of course. You have to be able to read between the lines of what they're saying in the news. Uh, I'm just looking at the facts of what actually exists, what events had actually occurred. And the actual occurrence was that Toys R Us confirmed Thursday, this was reported in 2018, that it plans to close all of its U.S. stores. All of them. <laughs> so, and, and, and not only that, it's it, it tried its best to survive chapter 11 bankruptcy to no avail. So when you consider that, right, you think of the hundreds and hundreds of stores, this is what you see. Hundreds and hundreds of stores that have just been closed, right? Kids dreams that are just being crushed. What other places have maybe experienced, you know, like retail, companies in the last few years that have experienced oh another one macy's <laughs> macy's is closing 45 stores in 2021 and this was this was i mean this is only 45 stores if we go back further enough we'll find look, let's just see ladies and gentlemen See, so what we see here is there's been talks about Macy's going bankrupt for a very long time. I mean, we're going back here. Guys, this is April 2021, the death of the department store. <laughs> Look, January, wow. Wow. I didn't even know it goes back this far. January 20, January 1992, that Macy's files for bankruptcy. You guys saw that? 
Look at that. January 1992, bankruptcy filing by Macy's of, of bankruptcy. So retail has been crushed time and time again over all of these years <laughs> due to just a simple idea of what is the free market economy. The economy says that, uh, going back to what I originally mentioned at the beginning of this video, that as supply and demand right drive the economy and there's less and less demand for people to go physically into a store because you have ideas you have other more convenient situations where people can simply shop for your same product for more convenience so therefore demand for your product drops and if you don't innovate then you get squashed. And this is why companies like Amazon in those same years have seemed to continue to go up. I mean, even, and here's, here's an exception to the rule, to the department store theory. You see, companies like Target have actually been doing really, really well during lockdown. And why is that? Well, because they started focusing more on delivery. They started focusing more on uh, pickup at store, they started focusing more on uh, a lot more online retail. They improved their website and their e-commerce system. And for that reason, then that's why they've been able to continue to do well time and time again, as you can see in the chart. Whereas uh, with companies like Macy's or Toys R Us, they've failed to innovate and therefore they've, they, they've been hurt by the pandemic. I mean, look at look at GameStop, right? So GameStop, you could usually buy your video games and your PlayStation and all of this, right? But it's, this goes back to September, 2019. These stores, since they failed to innovate, they've been crushed and they've been forced on top of that with a lockdown to close a lot of their locations physically and uh, the majority of the locations, forcing them to go into bankruptcy. So what do you get? Well, now you get a company that isn't producing any goods and services. And if it's not producing goods and services, then its value goes down, less people invest in it. And that's why you see, that's why you see in the chart, You see its value just slowly declining over time. I mean, this goes back 2013. You see it just continually gradually declining. More and more stores close. More, I mean, look at this. This was reported September 2019. So let's look at the chart. September 2019. I mean, this was basically... <laughs> September 2019, they already closed almost all of their stores at this point. This was the low of the low, right? All the way down here. I don't know if you guys could see it, but basically at this point. So the only reason GameStop had soared to this new record high so quickly is purely on speculation. And speculation exists. I'll show you guys. What is speculation? I'm going to go to a great, a, a, one of the best places I can find to, to define and, and explain uh, your definitions of things. What is speculation? Well, Speculation or speculative trading refers to the act of conducting a financial transaction that has substantial risk of losing value, but also holds the expectation of a significant gain or other major value. So an investor, if you're an investor who purchases a speculative investment uh, like GameStop, then you're likely focused on price fluctuations. Now, while the risk associated with the investment is high, the investor is typically more concerned about generating a profit. <laughs> T 
typically more concerned about generating a profit based on market value changes for that investment than on long term investing. And that, my friends, is it sums everything up. Because right now, when news was announced about Wall Street bets and uh, that they were that you know they were gonna try to go against the short squeeze, then it got a bunch of people involved in speculating that the price would go up. And remember what I mentioned earlier. What do you have when you don't have any products or goods or services? When that guy comes up to you and says, hey, I have a great business idea, right? All you got to do is just give me some money and I'll make more money come out of that money that you give me. Well, what's in between that that he's, that he's offering you? There is all he is offering you is this. But what is going on inside here? The fundamentals, fundamentals, meaning this, this is fundamentals, the news, the, the reality, what's actually going on with the company, right? The financials, the data, right? If, if you were a, a, a Warren Buffett, you would pull a move like this. Right. You would go in here. You look at the financials of the company. And you would look at. Right. What's their operating income? You look at, you know, what's their net income? It's been in the negative for years. <laughs> you look at, you know, what their, you know, how much cash that they're operating with. You look at, you know, what their total assets are. Right. You look at all of these things. And you say, okay, so if I were to buy this company, how do I improve it? How do I you know, build this company up so it can provide more goods and services, bring in more customers and experience a real experience? The only experience that people have right now is this roller coaster ride. Their price is going up. That's, that is the experience they have. And then this sharp drop of about 50% that you see here. That's the experience that people have right now is just a, simply on price, but it, it is it is hollow, ladies and gentlemen. There's no data within that other than just a bunch of people getting in there and buying the stock and going against those that it's basically a battle of the haves versus the have nots versus the haves. And nobody's got anything. <laughs> Because it's, it's just a bunch of dollars being moved around. It's just one piece of paper being exchanged for another. But it's not impacting the company because the company's still in bankruptcy. So the company's in bankruptcy, then there's no business. That is a pyramid scheme. <laughs> That's what's crazy about it. That is a pyramid scheme. So... This right here, speculation, and and I believe that you know these th this that's simply what all of these these battles on on the short squeezes are about is using the power of speculation, which is it's totally legal, by the way. People you know people have been short squeezing for as long as your know, shorts have existed, but the concept of hey, you know I'm I'm an average person. I got a hundred bucks you know, 200 bucks, maybe, you know, I never invested before, you know, oh, I see something in the news. I look at this GameStop thing. I see people making money. Hey, maybe I can too. Maybe I can ride this wave and just make a quick buck because right now I'm, I'm too busy working from home because I was unemployed because they shut down my company or in, and my boss kicked me out and I'm stuck at home and I'm collecting unemployment and stimulus checks. The lure is there. Of course. So I'm going to put my little savings from my stimulus check and I'm going to put it into this and hopefully I can make enough money so I can pay my bills. And that is the mania that's surrounding this, this speculation. Who cares about GameStop right now? Like seriously, 
those the the majority of people who bought PlayStation probably didn't even buy it at GameStop. Even though that's GameStop special, they probably bought it at Amazon. I actually would ask you guys to look that up and send me the send me the data on that. I would love to see that. Where were uh, where were the most PlayStation sales coming from? Where were they derived from? You see, so this is what separates the haves from the have nots because whether or not Wall Street is hurting, right? There are some news that show that Wall Street is hurting right now. A lot of hedge funds are being hurt, uh, but it actually doesn't hurt Wall Street in total because Wall Street is still being fueled by the transactions, whether it's a buy or a sell, it's still within the economy of buying and selling. So that's just a part of the balance of Wall Street. So Wall Street isn't hurting. However, personally, a few hedge fund managers or managers or you know, investors, yes, they're hurting. So a lot of people are, some people are making a lot of money and some people are losing a lot of money. But the issue is that too many people are focused only on making money or not losing money that they folk, they forgot the main idea. The main focus of this whole thing was, wait a minute, I'm in this thing to put myself in a position where I can improve my personal liberty. Uh, I can improve my lifestyle. I can prepare for a better future. I have more fiscal security, right? Those are the things we're not considering. Just too many people focus on making money, right? There's not enough of this that I'm highlighting here. Long-term investing. There's too much of people just being concerned about generating a quick profit. The get rich quick idea, guys, it's gotta end. Is it ever gonna end? I don't think so. I think there will always be this concept of getting rich quick. People want to just get in and get out. That's gambling. I'm I'm that's not my style. So I own physical silver uh, and I actually bought into silver. I bought in a silver back. So as you can see, uh, I got in the silver right around, oh, this is very long term. Right about around here. Oops. Yeah, right around here. I bought in the silver around July of 2020, like around this, this area. So fortunately, I was kind of, I kind of expected, you know, um, that this was going to happen. Uh, so I bought, I bought silver. I did my research. I did my research early on and I didn't do it because I expected a short squeeze. I did it because I wanted insurance, silver, physical metals, right? Silver, copper, gold, oil, uh, you know, like uh, wheat. Uh, tobacco, uranium, different physical commodities. Those are things that have existed on planet Earth for billions and billions and billions of years. And if they've been around for billions and billions of years, they probably still will be around for billions and billions and billions of years in the future. That to me is wealth. And that is what I invest my money in. I would not invest my money, me personally, just to make a quick buck. Because just as quickly as that quick buck can be made, then that quick buck can also be gone. And in fact, that big buck, uh, historically, it, every single fiat currency in the existence of mankind has always returned to its intrinsic value of zero. That's why if you guys saw <laughs> the picture that I put up earlier, you guys probably caught it.
of back in Germany, when they reached hyperinflation, you saw people carrying wheelbarrows and wheelbarrows of money because the government was printing so much money <laughs> that it got to a point where just like always, when you have too much of something, it tends to lose its value. So at some point, right, it reached hyperinflation. And at that point, their dollar, their, their currency was worthless, right? And there's so many examples of that. Right? You can see in Congo, when they experienced you know, hyperinflation, and they had to st <laughs> that is ridiculous right when you see argentina when they had reached hyperinflation so countries go through this every time and every time that they experience hyperinflation the value of their currency goes to zero their paper currency goes to zero at that time, they convert into something else like gold to as a, as a store of value. And I believe that that's where we're going right now. You know, all, of the, all of the charts are saying that that's what we're leading to now. I mean, if we looked at gold, right, gold right now. Usually during times of social unrest, you see commodities like gold tend to increase in value. I mean, this was back in September. So this was right, this was September 2010, 2011. And then we have here 2016. Uh, now going into 2018, you can see, right, 2018, we know what happened Let's go back to 2008. So ever since 2008, you could see during the uh, the global financial crisis, just the price of gold soared, right? And then again, you see, you know, after this this recent crisis that we faced last year, you see that the price had also soared again usually during times of social unrest when people are uncertain about their own economy where they live people tend to go deep and hoard as much gold as they possibly can and that's what we're experiencing right now that's why we're stabilizing at, at the top at an all-time high in gold so i believe that's what we're experiencing right now simply because uh, because of the conditions that we're facing and it's time to be prepared and less, it's time to be strategic and long-term and think of really what are the repercussions of what we're going through now than thinking of making a quick buck. So I hope this was valuable to you guys. If any of this you found valuable, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. You know, tell them about the channel, guys. I'm, I'm getting on here, obviously, as you can see, more and more, more and more often. Of putting out as much content uh, more you know half of the content is more specifically geared towards and actually i'll stop sharing my screen here half of the content that i put is focused on igenius and what we're doing to build igenius as a company uh, and the the team and you know the hundreds of thousands of users that we have in you know the hundred plus countries all around the world that exists right now just the education that everyone's getting right now the the legacies that people are building the the way that people are able to make money from home and to start building healthy financial habits to put themselves uh, basically at a, to propel themselves at a new level that they may not have ever experienced before get themselves out of those old you know, maybe unhealthy habits and into uh, a more you know strategic a more a, a more organized path towards your know, financial independence and essentially it's it's not easy 
guys. And if it was easy, we probably wouldn't value it as much, just like printing money. <laughs> as much as the government keeps printing money, it's almost like they're valuing it less and less and it's impacting our economy as we can see with everything going on. So I'm, I'm, I feel blessed to be a part of iGenius because I almost see that I could have learned all of this stuff on my own, but I would have had to make all of these extra mistakes. And because I was able to, you know, on a daily basis, utilize the community that we have within iGenius and, and a lot of individuals like myself or millennials, some individuals older than me, you know, some individuals younger than me, you know, a lot of people all coming from different walks of life. We're all in this together. But we're all just trying to figure it out. Most of us don't have that sophistication in the markets. However, we do have an ally. And in iGenius, we have somebody who does have the sophistication, who's teaching us all of the tools of the trade, no pun intended. They're showing us you know, what is going out there in the market right now and how can we best prepare and get sort of this edge uh, that we may not have otherwise have had. You know, we, you know, I, I almost feel like I could have ended up being the guy who just buys the GameStop stock, but instead, you know, I, I invest into things that, you know, in the long term, you know, have more, that, that give me a, a little bit more assurance in decisions that I make and build a more stable foundation for me. So what am I talking about? The university uh, that we have that teaches you about the foreign exchange markets, the stock market, the cryptocurrency markets, right? All of the financial technology tools that we have, some of which trade on your behalf, uh, some of which you know, are sort of like your partner and, you know, and it actually manages it for you, right? In relationship with some of our sister companies, right? Not to mention uh, the, the tools that we teach how to build an online business. There's so much involved in the company, guys. I can go here for a whole another half, a whole another hour, just talking about all the benefits. That's why there's an overview in the video, which I'll link here uh, as well. So essentially, but it, I do feel like it's a blessing because only it's crazy that only back in 2018 i was working at olive garden minimum wage barely getting enough hours on my shift reeking of leftover food trying to get by and i had a college degree and i couldn't get a freaking job as hard as i worked and to think that the reason why was simply because of a lack of skills and a lack of the financial education. And I'm glad that you know my friend had introduced this to me back then because uh, it had put it it propelled me into a completely different direction. So uh, I'm that's so most of the content you're gonna see is related to iGenius, but a lot of the other content. Uh, you will see is infused with you know, just sort of my opinions and my perspectives and my thoughts on what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis in the economy. So anything else that you guys want to see in here, right? Such as, you know, maybe I tend to stay away from the, from the politics, but anything, you know, in regards to cryptocurrencies, I have a bunch of knowledge around that, that I've learned just since, since a lot of my investments are heavily in cryptocurrencies and um, as well as, you know, anything that you guys want to know, you know, anything about maybe even the vegan lifestyle or, you know, how it is living in New York, right? Or, you know, any of those types of things, I'll be more than happy to share with you guys, you know, any of the suggestions you have, leave them below. With that said, it has been an absolute pleasure always being